Hey folks, welcome back to My Hit and Reads. I'm Eleanor and this is part one of a bookshelf tour, I hope. This is going to be an experiment. So I've tried filming bookshelf tours before, um, but they're long and involved and I don't have a lot of skills and it just never really worked properly. Um, but I was recently, ca recently catching up on Kalanati and Rachel had broken her bookshelf tour into three parts and I thought, hmm, that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is break my bookshelf tour up into parts of three shelves. So I have this um, is the one behind me is six shelves. So I'm going to break that into two different videos. Um, I have a, a three shelf book shelf as well that is also fiction so that's my fiction collection um i also have a three shelf bookshelf that is uh non-fiction and various other bits and bobs um and then i have two three bookshelves which are my tbr so we'll see how this goes i'm not sure if it's going to work um in terms of the way i'm going to film it this one behind me the top three shelves are going to be first which is uh if i remember correctly a through to part way through d of my fiction books um, and I, I shelve by author's last name, generally. Um, my tripod is not tall enough to go up that high. So what I'm going to do is do a quick scan down of those three shelves by hand. And then I am going to bring the uh, camera, the stand, closer to the shelf. And whichever shelf it will line up with, which I suspect, or well, it could be that one. I'm just going to bring the books down to that shelf to show you. Um, so yeah, let's see how this goes. I hope it works. And if it does work, I'll do further videos with the rest of my books. So we'll, let's, let's see, let's try this, huh? So this is my top shelf with my Welsh beanie dragon. This is the second shelf with my cream lace fan and my uh, Ghostbusters Funko Pops and this is my third shelf of fiction which has the uh, little lamp that I got from Alcrate, my uh, Sarah and the Worm Funko Pops, um, 13th Doctor and River and some little other Doctor Who figurines as well. So this shelf is not one of the ones we'll be looking at today, but as I thought, my uh, camera stand was not high enough to reach up to the third shelf, so this is the fourth shelf. But let's start having a look at these books. First up, we have Irish Fairy and Folk Tales, which doesn't have an author. Um, I bought this going through my uh, fairy tale phase. I had a really intense one where I bought a lot of books and then didn't read them. This one I did read. So I mainly bought it because it's really pretty. Uh, like it's this green leathery cover with gold on it and it's got little gold things. But it's also full of Irish fairy and folk tale. Next we have Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. So this is the only Douglas Adams book that I have read but... It is funny, although here is where I admit that because of the way I came to Douglas Adams, I like the movie better. So here we have The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. Um, this I initially read in ebook for the Hugo Awards, but I recently acquired a physical copy for myself because I want to reread it. So this is a fantasy novel about a half goblin who ends up becoming the emperor because everyone in his family gets killed in an accident. We have The Never Never Land, uh, which is edited by Mitchell Ankhurst, Philip Berry and Ian McHugh. This is one of the uh, Canberra Science Fiction Guild's anthologies. The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert, which is one of my Alcrate books that I really enjoyed and is quite fairy tale-y, if a bit dark. The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertali. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This is one of my favourite books. Um, I've been reading and rereading this for years. Um, yeah, it's a classic. Next, we have some Star Wars books. There are a lot in my collection. This, These are Legends books. And this is the uh, Corellian Trilogy by Roger McGuire Allen. It starts with Ambush at Corellia. Then we have Assault at Salonia. And then there is Showdown at Centerpoint. There's no cover on this one because it's old, 
but uh, this is the uh, X-Wing Star Wars books that were written by Aaron Alston. So this is Wraith Squadron. We have Iron Fist, Solo Command, and Starfighters of Ajima. Continuing on a Star Wars theme, we have the Jedi Academy trilogy by Kevin J. Anderson, which starts with Jedi Search, then goes to Dark Apprentice, and then Champions of the Force. And we have an anthology from Star Wars that is written by Kevin J. Anderson called Tales from Jabba's Palace. But wait, there are more Star Wars books. These are from the Young Jedi Knights series, um, which I haven't read all the series. I think I read the first part of the series, and I'm not sure if I've actually read the third one that I have, but we have Young Jedi Knights, which is the first, uh, Heirs of the Force, which is the first one. This is by Kevin J. Anderson and Rebecca Moesta. Shadow Academy. And then Jedi Bounty, which I'm not sure if I've read. I may have acquired it randomly at some stage. Um, I might actually have to try and read that because I don't recognise the blurb. And so we move away from Star Wars to my favourite author, Jane Austen. So we have Pride and Prejudice in this vintage edition. We have Sense and Sensibility in the Penguin Classics. Emma in the Penguin Classics. And Persuasion in the Pen Penguin Classics. My edition of Mansfield Park in Penguin Classics is not currently here because I'm in the middle of rereading it. But we have this very pretty edition of Persuasion as well. Lady Susan in this small Jet Penguin Classics edition. A very best battered secondhand copy of Northanger Abbey. The Norton edition of Northanger Abbey, which I believe I got for my classwork. And this illustrated quotations of Jane Austen. I also have Pride and Prejudices and Zombies by Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith, which I don't actually like, but I keep it anyway, because how could I possibly get rid of a Jane Austen book? Then we have The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. The Belly Grumble Bigfoot by Diane Bates, which is a Australian book from my childhood. The Fairy Rebel by Lynn Reed Banks, also from my childhood. And The Pits 10 by J Jim Bamba, which was a gift when I was in my Formula One uh, phase and is basically a whole bunch of Formula One related cartoons. We have Anne M. Martin, The Story of the Author of the Babysitters, Babysitters Club by Margot Becker R. with Anne M. Martin, which technically should probably go in the nonfiction section, but it's always been on this shelf because I've had it for a very long time. Home by Larissa Barrent, but I haven't actually read this book yet. I think I got part way through, which is why there's a bookmark in it, but it's an Australian novel, um, which I really should. Get along to reading at some stage. Hope Hospital, Get Well Soon, Little Sister by Cherie Bennett, which I believe someone gave me at some stage and I can't remember what it's about, again, from my childhood. Bad Power by Deborah B. and Cotty. This is a collection from the 12 Planets series uh, and it's about when superpowers go wrong. And an old copy of Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom. And that is the end of the first shelf. Shelf two starts with my Ended Blighton collection, which I loved a lot as a, as a girl. Um, so this is a bind up of the Enchanted Wood, the Magic Faraway Tree and the Folk of the Faraway Tree. We have a Five Finder Outers mystery, the mystery of the secret room, the mystery of the missing necklace and the mystery of the strange bundle. Then we start my St. Clair's collection with Summer Terms at St. Clair's, Second Form at St. Clair's, Claudine at St. Clair's and Fifth Formers of St. Clair's. I don't actually have all of the St. Clair's and Mallory Towers books, but I did read them all. As I mentioned Mallory Towers, we have First Term at Mallory Towers, Second Form at Mallory Towers, Third Year at Mallory Towers, a second copy of Third Year at Mallory Towers and In the Fifth at Mallory Towers. And at the top of this stack of books, we have Lady Ardley Street Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Then we have Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, which I didn't like, but it's a very pretty edition, so I can't get rid of it. Cat Incorrigible by Stephanie Burgess. A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. My Life as a Fake by Peter Carey, which was also bought for class. Then we have a foundational series for Australian fantasy fans of my age group, The Ober Newton Chronicles. So we have Ober Newton by Isabel Carmody, The Far Seekers, Ashling, and The Keeping Place, which is the first four books. Book five is The Stone Key. Book six is The Sending. 
And book seven is The Red Queen. Then we have the Gal Carriger novels that I have managed to acquire in hard copy. Curtsies and Conspiracies, which is the second of the uh, Finishing School series. And Manners and Mutiny, which I believe is the last of the Finishing School series. Solace, which is the first of the Parasol, Parasol Protectorate. Prudence, which is the first of the Custard Protocol series. And Imprudence, which is the second of the Custard Protocol books. And we finish off the second shelf of my fiction books with Lewis Carroll Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in the Collins Classic Edition. And Lewis Carroll's O Frobjeste, which is a collection of his weird and wonderful poetry. Shelf number three starts with The Bloody Chamber in Vintage Edition by Angela Carter, which is a collection of short stories. Contemporary Australian Feminist Poetry, edited by Bonnie Cassidy and Jessica L. Wilkinson. And Sudden Death, a Sarah Howell mystery by Kate Chester, which is one of the random teenage mysteries I acquired when I was a teenager. Now we come to my random collection of Agatha Christie books. So this is a crime collection which contains the murder of Ra Roger Ackroyd. They do it with mirrors and Mrs. McGinty's dead. And we have a similar edition which contains a Caribbean mystery, Taken at the Flood and The Seven Dials mystery. One of my favourite marples is The Thirteen Problems by Agatha Christie, as is The Body of the Library and The Murder at the Vicarage. This is a, another combined edition an omnibus which has the body in the library again, the moving finger, a murder is announced, and 450 from Paddington. Continuing the Miss Marple theme, we have A Pocket Full of Rye, The Mirror Cracked, At Bertram's Hotel, Nemesis, and The Sleeping Murder. Moving on to Poirot, we have Cards on the Table, if my light will let you see it, Death on the Nile, Dead Man's Folly, The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding, Five Little Pigs, After the Funeral, the Mysterious Affair at Styles, The Peril at N House, Curtain, and one that's neither a Marple nor a Poirot, Why Didn't They Ask Evans? Continuing the crime theme, we have the second, third, and fourth books in Anne Cleves' Shetland series, White Knights, Red Bones, and Blue Lightning. Poetry does often get shelved with my... Uh, fiction because I don't have enough of it to be separate so we have selected poetry of Samuel Taylor Coleridge which I haven't read all of but I believe was part of one of my I must read intelligent book phases. Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad purchased for school didn't like. We have the three books that are currently published in Paul Cornell's series of London of supernatural crimes so London Falling, The Severed Streets, and who killed Sherlock Holmes. Unfortunately, this book series was cancelled, but I live in hope that one day the rest of the books will come out. Doctor Who the Gunfighters by Donald Cotton. I haven't read it, but I did acquire a few secondhand ones. Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Colthurst. Books two and three of the Han Solo trilogy by A.C. Crispin. Um, I think I have two versions of book two, and the rest of them are on my two red pile because I really need to reread these. Um, but The Hut Gambit and Rebel Dawn. And then the final set of books on this third of my sh fiction shelves, so my final ones for this video, are Matilda by Roald Dahl, which is my favourite Roald Dahl, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl, and this undust-jacketed one, which is James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. So that was the first three shelves of my fiction collection. I'm going to do my best to get this all edited. And yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments, particularly if you want another one really soon. Um, but that went pretty smoothly, so I might continue doing them when I have time in between my regular videos. So yeah, that was my bookshelves. Uh, I will see you all again really, really soon. Bye.